Evangelistic Impact This message is interpreted and broadcast by Word of Inspiration International Radio from Bukaramanga, Colombia, which is an outreach of the worldwide missionary movement. Let's listen to our speaker, the founder of the worldwide missionary movement, Reverend Wisem Ortiz, through the voice of our interpreter. The faith of the Canaanite woman. Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coasts and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she cried after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not made to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. And she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith, be it unto thee even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Matthew fifteen twenty one through 28 in these two coastal cities of the Mediterranean Sea, Gentiles lived. They were two very important ports, Tyre and Sidon, and of course pagan. As the Lord has never been a respecter of people, he went to this region of Gentiles to preach the gospel. And from the region of Tyre and Sidon, land of the Philistines, a woman, a Canaanite, of Canaan, came forth and seeing Jesus of whom she had heard wonders, she began to follow him and call out. It doesn't say she called out once, but she cried unto him, saying, O Lord, thou son of David, have mercy on me, my daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. This woman recognized that she could call that rabbi that preacher, that master, Lord. Even though she was not Hebrew, she understood that Jesus was Lord. Just as the Hebrews do not call any man Lord except only and exclusively God, this Canaanite woman understood that Jesus was and is the Son of God, and she called him Lord. And she followed the Lord with the multitude that was with him, and called to him, saying, Lord, thou son of David. In saying so, she placed Jesus in the lineage of David and called him Lord. She was recognizing him as the promised Messiah, the son of David. And that woman was saying, Have mercy on me. She did not come with haughtiness or believing that she deserved anything. She came to the mercy of the Lord. Scrutinizing the four Gospels, we find that everyone who sought help from the Lord, be it a miracle, be it healing from their body, or for any other reason, when they came to Jesus and called Him Lord and appealed to His compassion, His mercies, His love, saying, Lord, have mercy on me. Lord, have mercy on me. All who came to Jesus in this manner did not return home empty-handed. They took with them what they had asked of the Lord. We certainly cannot come to Him full of pride, vanity, haughtiness, thinking and believing we are the big deal. It is then that He answers out our trust, our faith, when we turn to Him 
as to a merciful God that if he does something for us, it is not because we deserve it, but because he is compassionate. He is merciful. He is good. And this is how this Gentile woman came. She did not call out only once. She was persistent. And as the Lord walked, she called out. And she had to overcome very difficult circumstances. In those times, it was indecorous for a woman to be in the midst of a multitude of men. It was not a custom. It was not acceptable. But she had a problem and had heard about Jesus. And she knew that the only one who could solve her problem was Jesus. She forgot about the conditions of the society of her time. She forgot all of it. She had a need and was persuaded that the only person who could help her was Jesus, the son of David. And she continued crying out and calling out and calling out and said, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me, she added. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. Her daughter was possessed by a demon, and this is a very sad condition for a person. The person goes mad, loses his or her own personality. It is nothing to go naked in public. It is nothing to curse even her or his own mother. He or she is totally alienated to the circumstances. He or she is controlled and dominated by the demons. Many know that liquor ruins them economically. They even say, I'll never drink again. But when Saturday comes, they are paid their salary and they forget all they had said, all they had promised. Why? Because they are slaves of Satan. And Satan induces them to sin and waste their money. Being slaves of Satan and controlled by demons, they turn to the same things and continue in their sad lives. Until one day, they call to the Lord and ask Him for help. Then the merciful Christ, the compassionate Christ, the good Christ, orders the demons to depart from their lives, and those men or women are set free because they have accepted Christ as their Savior. They serve the Lord, and no vice can control them. No evil can overcome them. Christ is gives us the victory. This woman followed the Lord crying, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is grievously vexed with a demon. The word says that Jesus answered her not a word. Jesus kept silent. Another person would have thought, I am following him and crying behind him. I have recognized that he is God. I have called him Lord. And I called and called and come crying out and nothing. He doesn't answer. He ignores me. Well, it isn't as I was told. So now I'm leaving. But she did not leave. The Lord kept silent. He did not speak a word. But she did not leave. She did not get upset. She did not make any judgment of Christ. She continued calling out. Jesus kept silent, but she continued calling out. Sometimes we do not receive a quick answer from the Lord, and we stop praying, we stop calling out, but that woman did not. She continued calling out. May God help us to continue to cry out, not to give up. What the Lord's silence achieves is to encourage us to continue crying out. And thus our faith is strengthened. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But she knew she had a need and was sure that the only person who could help her was Jesus, the son of David. And for her, the rest did not hinder her. Even though they were criticizing her, she continued crying out. Jesus kept silent. But she continued crying out. It would seem 
that the Lord did not want to know anything about her. But that was not so. It was that the Lord knows things beforehand. The Lord knew beforehand the kind of faith that woman had, that it was able to overcome the most difficult trials in order to obtain what she needed from the hands of Jesus. Then the Lord tells her, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now one more trial. She was not from the house of Israel. She was a Canaanite, a Gentile. And with these the Lord was telling her that there was nothing for her. But she did not leave. If I were to ask how many of us would have left, let us be honest. If we cry out to the Lord and He ignores us, and then we continue calling out to the Lord, and we hear Him say, He has only come to the lost sheep of the house of Israel and not for us. If this were to happen to us, many of us would turn away and leave angry. But this woman neither left nor became angry. Let us see her reaction. We read, Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. When it says, came she, it means she was about five or ten meters away from where Jesus was. She came closer to him. When there is a true faith in the midst of the difficulties and problems, such a strong faith in God and his word brings us closer to the Lord. Then came she and worshipped him. A tremendous faith, a faith that does not falter, a faith that does not give up, a faith that conquers, a faith that obtains what one needs. And when she came closer to Jesus and worshipped him, she asked him for help. Let us listen to the words of the Lord. It is not me to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. The Lord is not mistreating this Canaanite woman, but the Lord knew the faith of this woman, and he knew this woman would not back down. The Lord led the incident in this manner to establish the Bible in the New Testament for our benefit. What a faith that does not falter is. A faith that does not yield, that triumphs, that overcomes, that pursues. The Lord is teaching us that when we have a real and true faith in Him and His Word, we will not yield, but will persist and obtain what we are asking of the Lord. It is not me to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. Not that the Lord wanted to treat this woman as if she were a dog. The Lord is not that kind of person. The Lord is respectful. He respects everyone's will. He was trying her faith. Not that he disregarded her faith, but to establish in the pages of the New Testament one of the greatest examples of a faith that overcomes. But this woman did not yield, did not give up, did not leave angered and murmuring. He has called me a dog. I can't believe he would do such a thing I am living. No, she did not leave. She was not offended. She did not murmur. She spoke with Jesus. That is what we have to do. Speak with Jesus. When the Lord mentioned the dogs, she said, Truth, Lord. Yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. How marvelous! How precious! that she was not offended, but said to the Lord, Yes, Lord, it is true, but do not forget that the dogs also eat of the crumbs that fall from the table of their owners. It is okay, I am as a dog, but I get the crumbs. And the crumbs she wanted was the Lord to heal her daughter who was full of demons. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, Great is thy faith, be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. The Lord marveled at the faith of this woman. 
O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee even as thou wilt. A faith that falters in God is an insult to the Lord because we are showing that we have no faith in the Lord. And God responds to faith. She could not live with empty hands and her daughter was made whole from that very hour. In times like these, our faith increases and achieves great things in the Lord. In this we please the Lord. And let us not forget that no one can enter heaven without having been tried. And in difficulties, we need to overcome our trials. If the trial do not defeat you, then you are apt to the kingdom of heaven, because only those who overcome can enter in. A great example of a strong faith, a faith that does not falter, does not yield, that does not relent, in no way pauses, but continues to persist and persist. And the Lord tries to see how far the person will go, for his purpose is for us to conquer. And the truth is that every time we overcome a trial, the next one will be more difficult. And thus we will exercise to always win. God's word in Revelation 3.21 says, To him that overcometh, Will I grant a seat with me in my throne? Glory to God. If this message was a blessing for you, write us at word at inspiration at hotmail.com. Visit our website www.imiw.org or call us at 57764-2286. God bless you.